Okay, let's now look at market failure. And one of the key reasons why markets fail is when there are externalities present. So, in this video, we're going to look at negative externalities. But what is market failure? Market failure is very simply when the free market fails to allocate resources at the socially optimum level. And this leads to a net loss in social welfare. Okay, that's the definition. Negative externalities, you need to know this as well. Negative externalities are detrimental third party effects as a result of the actions from a separate agent. So when someone consumes something or produces something, so engages in an economic transaction, okay, the effect of doing that harms a third party, somebody else not involved in that transaction is harmed. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, that poor fellow's got nothing to do with what we're doing over here is affected negatively by what we're doing. So there's an impact on welfare, okay? impact on society as a result. So negative externalities, we need to consider how they cause market failure and why their existence leads to a misallocation of resources. Right, we can show the market failure on a diagram. We're going to look at negative externalities in consumption, so when people consume something or a good, and when firms produce and the negative externalities that are caused there as well. Okay, the diagram is so useful, it makes things very clear in explaining exactly what the market figure is and why it occurs. Right, let's have a look. So I've put on the right hand side here a little kind of pro forma, a little uh, technique really for you to make sure you get all of these externality diagrams correct. So the negative and positive, the same kind of structure applies for drawing diagrams. You'll never get them wrong following this. So we always start with a downward sloping and an upward sloping curve. We're not going to enable these yet. This is a welfare diagram, so it's not just demand supply, it's something else. Right. So first thing we need to do is to work out which curve is going to move. Either the cost curve or the benefits curve. Well, we're going to first look at a negative externality in consumption. Let's do that. So we're looking in consumption, therefore the externalities are generated by consumers, and which curve relates to consumers? The benefits curve relates to consumers. So that curve is going to move. The benefits curve is the downward sloping curve. It is really the demand curve. The other curve, we're not going to touch. So that would just going to enable MSC, which is also MPC. Okay? Um, which way does the curve move? We know we're moving this one. It's a negative externality, so we have to move it left. Anytime you have negative externalities, the curve always moves left, whichever one you're moving. Okay? The curve that we move now, let's label them. The curve we move is the social one. Okay, so the marginal social benefit. The other one is the private benefit. So whichever curve we move left, okay, for a negative externality is the social one. Any curve we move right for positive externality is the social one. Okay, whichever one that moved is the social one. Now the market equilibrium only considers the private effects. So the private benefits and the private costs. Okay, in truth, the private costs are the social costs, assuming no production externalities here. But the social optimum takes into account the full social effects. So I'll label that P star and Q star to indicate what society would like. And finally, the welfare loss. To work out the welfare loss, how much is society being harmed by this misallocation? Go to the market equilibrium, which is here, and work out where the social costs and the social benefits are at that level of production, Q1. Well, at the red dot, that's a level of social cost, whereas this blue dot, sorry, blue dot, sorry, whereas at this one, that's a level of social benefit. Right, so the costs are higher than the benefits for all of these units. So the way you do it is you work out the vertical distance between social benefit and social cost and then you shade in the triangle which points towards the social optimum. That's the way to do it. Okay, so that area represents all the units that have been produced where the cost is more than the benefit. So that's the area of loss as a result of doing that. So this diagram tells you there is a misallocation of resources. Q star is what society would like produced, but Q1 is what's actually produced in the market. There's an overproduction here. So that there is the market failure. Okay, an overproduction, misallocation of resources. And that happens because um, individuals don't account for the negative externalities. Okay, the social benefits curve takes into account these negative externalities in consumption. So in truth, the social benefit is less than what the private benefits are. But the private consumer doesn't take them into account. He only cares about his own self-interest. He doesn't care about how the rest of society feels and what the true society benefits are. So he just continues consuming. 
So what is an example of a negative externality? Well, if the individual consumer smokes a cigarette, well, that lets off passive smoke, which can be inhaled by a third party, someone passing by. As that person inhales the smoke, that person might get ill, and then has to go to the to, to hospital and has to get treated. Well, there's a cost on the individual and a cost to the health service. A negative externality, a negative effect, third party cost. But the private individual doesn't care about that. The private individual only cares about his own self-interest, which means that the private benefits are greater than the social benefits. But when the social benefits are included, and that includes external costs in this case, the negative externality of consumption, the true benefits are actually less. The society benefits are less. And because of that, we have an overproduction. Okay? So self-interest underpins the market failure there. What about a negative externality in production? Well, this now hopefully should be really simple. If we go through the same basic technique. So let's do our diagram again. So at the top, y-axis, we've got price, costs, and benefits. We're now doing welfare diagrams, so you must label all three. And we have quantity on the x-axis. Okay, again, we have a downward sloping and an upward sloping curve. Okay. Now, a negative externality in production, which curve moves? Production links to firms, which is the costs curve, the upward sloping one. Okay, which means we're not moving this one. So let's label that MSB and MPB. That's not moving anywhere. So which way does this curve move? Again, we're working with a negative externality, so it moves left. The curve that we moved is the social one, so let's label that MSC. The one that we haven't moved, therefore, is MPC. The private optimum only considers the private costs and benefits, so let's label that Q1. Whereas the social optimum can, considers the full social effects. Okay. Okay, well, if that loss, go to the private equilibrium, which is there, the blue dot. Right, that level compares social benefits and social costs. Well, here are the social benefits, but look, here are the social costs. So we have the same problem as before. Costs are greater than benefits. So we produce all these units where the costs are more than benefits. So now you're shading the area which points towards the social optimum. It's always a triangle. Shading the triangle that points towards the social optimum once you've compared the two. Right. So again, we've got the same problem, an overproduction compared to the socially optimum level, Q1 is more than Q star. And that occurs because the negative externality is not considered by firms. So what are negative externalities in production? Well, pollution is a major one. So the cost of pollution, whether that's visual pollution or air pollution or noise pollution, there's a cost. If it's resource degradation, okay, so maybe dumping uh, waste in rivers, that degrades a resource, there's a cost to society. Maybe resource depletion by using up all the fossil fuels in the world, that's not what society wants. Okay, so there's a cost to society there. So there are examples of negative externalities in production. The problem is, firms only consider their private costs. They don't consider the full costs, which include the external costs. So the social costs are not included. They're not accounted for. Only the private costs are, and they ignore any negative externalities in production, which leads to an overproduction here. All right? The social costs include this negative externality. But because of self-interest, the market allocates resources to Q1 instead of Q star, and we have an overproduction issue, a misallocation of resources, which causes market failure. Okay? So that's the rationale behind negative externalities in both production and consumption. Next time, positive externalities. Thank you very much. See you then.